Shopping for a red light therapy device can be overwhelming. Cheap devices that don't do a thing, overhyped marketing that promises overnight miracles, and endless options that leave you more confused than ever. You've probably seen it all. For some people, it's wasted money on products that never worked. For others, it's frustration with shady return policies and questionable customer service. We had one customer reach out to us who had ordered two other brands of red light therapy devices and had been super unhappy with the results. She later found that they were gimmicks, devices without the necessary wavelengths and irradiance. And this was the reason that she wasn't seeing the results she expected. So what did she do? Well, she bought a loom box because her friend had been raving about its power and design. And after just two sessions of red light therapy on her knee, she was no longer in pain. So this goes to show that if you have the right device with the right specs, red light therapy can absolutely work. Hi, I'm Fenella from The Loom Box, graduate from Stanford University with a Masters of Science and now turned red light therapy guru, here to help bridge the gap between the science noise and your day-to-day -day wellness practices. In this video, I'm going to show you how to avoid the fake devices and how to find a device that actually delivers the real results for you. Let's get into it. So why do most red light therapy devices fail? Well, here's the thing. Not all red light therapy devices are created equal. In fact, most devices you'll find on, say, Amazon don't work well because the device lacks the two essential things that make red light therapy work. First of all, they're not using the right wavelengths. Studies consistently show that for us to be able to reap the biological benefits of red light therapy, from skin health and collagen support to relieving those aches and pains, you need to use very specific wavelengths of red light. And I know what you're thinking, no, any red light bulb that looks red won't do. In fact, the light needs to be a very specific wavelength. The most well-studied lie within the ranges of 630 to 660 nanometers. This is in the red range, and then 810 to 850 nanometers, which is light in the near-infrared spectrum. So it's no good to rely on brands to tell you that they use the right wavelengths. You want to see this firsthand, that this has been verified by an independent lab. So for example, Lumox has been third-party tested to emit specifically 660 and 850 nanometers. These are the ideal wavelengths as shown in many studies for the skin supporting temporary pain relieving benefits. Now the second reason is that they lack sufficient power or irradiance. What is irradiance? Well, let me explain. Wavelength is the what, irradiance is the how much. In other words, how much light energy your body actually receives. And this matters a lot. Just like the dose of a supplement matters, the dose of light you're receiving matters too. If you're treating joints or deeper tissues, you need a high irradiance to allow the light to penetrate deeper under the skin. For skin, you need less irradiance, but still enough to actually trigger those cells to respond. Most devices don't even list their irradiance. Or worse, they list something like greater than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Now that's a red flag. Because first of all, what does this even mean? Is it 101? Is it 200? This is so non-specific. But if they do list a more precise irradiance, has this number been verified in a third-party lab? Oftentimes, companies will just use a handheld light meter to verify their irradiance, and this is notoriously inaccurate. So, look for third-party irradiance testing, and to get the most bang for your buck, find a device with high irradiance, so you can use it on deeper tissues like joints and muscles, or you can move it further away and use it for your face. That's right, you don't need to buy two or three different devices for different parts of the body. If you invest in a high quality device with a high irradiance, it'll work for different parts of your body. Take this as an example. Loombox emits 140 milliwatts per centimeter squared in near infrared light mode at one centimeter away. That's perfect for those deeper tissues. And then when you move it further away to about six inches, the device emits 22 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And that's an ideal irradiance for the face. Oh, and by the way, if you've been eyeing a professional grade red light therapy device like Loombox, you can save $260 by using the link I've dropped in the description for you below. Now, before you even turn on your device, Take a step back and ask, what am I actually trying to treat? Because the truth is, your results depend just as much on your goals as they do the device you're using. Let me explain. Are you only wanting to help with the appearance of fine lines? If that's the case, you don't need a higher radiance device. Somewhere between 20 to 30 milliwatts per centimeter squared is the sweet spot. But if your goal is targeted pain relief, joint health, or muscle recovery, you do need a high irradiance device. I see people use those LED face masks on their knees or their muscles, but they're usually so low powered that they just won't do anything. 
And if you only wanted targeted treatment, say over your joints, you won't want a giant panel either because you're gonna be getting too much light to the rest of your body. All this to say, this is why a powerful handheld device is my ideal for targeted treatment. Plus you can take it to the gym, to work, and even on the plane. So the bottom line, know what you're treating and match your tool to your goal. And if you're like me and want to invest in a device that can do it all, rather than buying all those expensive individual devices, because those prices can really rack up, just get one like Loombox that's compact, powerful, and able to deliver consistent targeted energy. Plus, I also love to use Loombox for my face over a mask because it's designed to deliver just the right amount of light when you hold it six inches away. And why am I raving about this? Well, by holding it six inches away, you're allowing the light to spread out and this gives my skin beautifully even coverage. With some masks, the LEDs are spaced too far apart, so you end up receiving patchy coverage since the device sits so close to the skin. Okay, so now that you're clear on the treatment goal, how do you really spot red flags in a red light therapy device? You know, it's actually quite simple once you know all the basics. And there's a lot of red light therapy devices on the market, so I'm gonna share how to spot the ones that aren't worth your money or your time. Red flag number one, you've looked all over the website and can't find any data on a radiance or wavelengths. And if they do list those numbers, first ask, were those numbers third party tested? Because honestly, anyone can type in a spec into a product listing or use a handheld light meter to generate inaccurately high irradiance readings. But unless it's been verified by an accredited lab, it doesn't mean much. Red flag number two, the brand doesn't say that they're registered with the FDA. This is quite common across cheap devices on Amazon and even some popular brands. Red flag number three, no safety certifications. I mean, you're using this light on your face, your joints, your body. It has to be tested for safety. Look for IEC certifications like IEC 606011 or IEC 6060-1257. If a company doesn't mention safety testing at all or FDA registration, I'd be cautious. There you have it, three red flags. So if a company can't tell you their power output, they can't back it with real testing and they haven't been registered with the FDA, I won't tell you don't buy it, but I'd be very cautious when investing good money. So what does matter when shopping for your red light therapy device? First things first, check that it meets IEC standards for electrical, EMF and optical light safety. I'm listing the top certifications on screen for you to look out for. Just pause the video, take a screenshot so you have it saved in your back pocket for later. Second, look for professional grade LEDs that emit specific wavelengths and a higher radiance, having also been third party tested for those. Third, choose a device that is portable and has higher radiance so that you can use it for multiple things rather than just one. In other words, powerful enough to support muscle and joint health up close or the ability to move it further away for skin rejuvenation. That way you'll get your money back in just a few weeks. Fourth, make sure it's registered with the FDA and that fifth, it has a long battery life so you can use the device for all your niggles throughout the day. Now, when we saw all these problems with other devices on the market, this was an opportunity to design a device that did it all. Lumox uses the exact wavelengths used in studies. I mentioned those are 660 nanometers and 850 nanometers. The device has been third party tested by SGS and emits up to 140 milliwatts per centimeter squared in near infrared light mode. That's that higher radiance that will allow the light to penetrate deeper under the skin. Lumox also meets all the rigorous safety standards listed here, while also being low EMF, compact, and easy to use, whether you're treating your skin, your joints, or a sore muscle after a workout. In fact, one customer told us that she started using Loombox for her skin and then was shocked to find that it also helped with her knee pain too. Another said it's her go-to tool in her medicine toolbox and it's more important than her coffee in the morning because it's so easy to grab and go. And by the way, as a reminder, if you're in the market for a device that checks every box and fits into your real life, I've dropped a link in the caption for you to save $260 on the Loombox. If you've ever felt overwhelmed by endless options or frustrated by devices that don't live up to the hype, you're not alone. I really hope this video gave you some clarity and helped you see what actually matters when choosing the right panel for you. If you're still looking for a bit more support, don't forget to grab our free guide on how to choose the right red light therapy device. I've linked that for you in the description below too. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.